students. Um, before we go through the learning number eight, is there anyone who have a question on based on the prior material, like learning seven, six, five, going back? But I'm not going to dwell more or they just raise whatever concern you have, then we'll take it and then we proceed further. Any question from Dakalani? No, okay. Any question from from Stephen? Stephen, I can't hear you if you are talking at all. Mary. Um. Hi, sir. I don't have any question. Thank you. Okay, I will assume that everyone doesn't have any question. Then let's proceed further to learning number eight. So the learning number eight will be dealing more with the dividends. So mostly it's the dividends which are paid by a subsidiary. And then after they've been paid by the subsidiary, the parent can make a provision for those dividends received to other parties outside the group or the parent can decide to make no provision with regard to those dividends. So the dividend can be received and then they only sit on the books of the parent or the parent make a provision to declare the same dividends to other people outside the party. Or sometimes the subsidiary doesn't declare the dividends at all. So when we check uh, introduction on example, I mean introduction on paragraph 8.1, they say the dividend or the dividend paid or declared in the consolidated statement of change in equity would always be merely the dividends payable by the owners of the parent. We eliminate all dividends paid or declared by the subsidiary. So the minute subsidiary declare the dividends, those dividends they will be eliminated because we know we don't we are not obliged to carry all those dividends declared by a subsidiary to our consolidations. This principle is in accordance with the basic consolidation principle, name, namely that we eliminate all intra-group transactions before we compile the consolidated annual financial statement. Non-controlling shareholders share in the subsidiary profit before the payment of dividends. Therefore, if a subsidiary pays a dividend, it means that non-controlling owners have realized part of their interest in the profit in the form of a dividend. This will reduce the credit balance on the non control interest in the consolidated statement of financial position as the subsidiary now owes the non controlling owners less. Then the dividend paid or declared. Now this will be the treatment, like how are they being treated all the dividend paid or declared by the subsidiary. The following are the five situations that mostly frequent, frequently occur with regard to the dividends in the consolidated annual financial statement. The first one will be a situation where the subsidiary has made no provision and does not wish to make any provision for the dividends. The second one will be the subsidiary paid a dividend to its owner. The third one being the subsidiary has made a provision for the dividend declared and the parent has made a provision for the appropriate dividend receivable. So in this case, the subsidiary will make the provision or will declare the dividend and then based on the same dividend declared by the subsidiary, the parent will make a provision for those dividends to other people outside the group. The fourth situation, the subsidiary has made a provision for the dividend declared, but the parent has made, has made no provision for the appropriate dividends receivable. So in this case, subsidiary declared the dividend, and then the parent will receive the dividend, but in that case, the parent did not make any provision with regard to the dividend receivable. So there was no provision for the dividend receivable and there was no intention to declare the same dividend to the people outside the group. And then the fifth one will be subsidiary must make a provision for the dividend declared. So in this case, the subsidiary is having a dividend which will be declared, then you make a provision that, okay, I declared this dividend and I also want to make a provision for dividend payable in the future based on the same amount that he declared. And we will see based on today's time, how far can we go with this five example? 
whether we can able to treat all five examples or we're only going to treat three or four, we will see with the time. So first, now let's tackle the example one, which will be the situation where the subsidiary has not made any provision to declare the dividends, and as a result, there are no dividends declared. So we are given the abridged uh, statement of financial position, the abridged uh, statement of profit and loss, and the statement of change in equity. And then we are given a transaction that A Limited acquired its interest in B Limited on 1 January 2007. That is the date of acquisition on which date they retain a means of B Limited amount to 10,000. Consider the carry amount of the assets and the liabilities of B Limited to equal the favor thereof on the date of acquisition. So they didn't mention any further transaction, but there was going to be a trans a, another transaction which to say the subsidiary has not paid or declared any dividends. That is the second transaction which is missing, which is supposed to put it there. So their solution, first you're going to draft the analysis of shareholders, which is the common thing that we do. And we all know how to tackle it. Because here, the main focus will be on the current year of our analysis. So I'm not going to do much on the analysis. I'm going to only focus on the current year part. Analysis. So on this analysis, we have the total as usual. We have the situation of the at and since. And then we have the situation of NCI. So the value of share capital, we know how to derive it. that share capital is based on the date of uh, acquisition. How much was the share capital of our subsidiary, which it was the 100,000. We already know how to arrive to this situation, so I'm not going to dwell more on this part. And then we have the 20,000. So our retain earnings based on the information given from our ad acquisition part, it was 10,000. And then the percentage of interest to be eight. And then with two. Then it will have the So we have our consideration paid. So all in all, this module is more of a repetition of whatever thing happened in the beginning. We just repeat it. So they just add a slight thing. So you just have to know how do you tackle that slight thing which have been added. So in this case, there was a no goodwill since our the consideration given is equal to the amount which was which the the property was waiting at that time we acquire the asset so the goodwill will be nil and then we go to the since acquisition to the beginning of the current year which we all, all know how to arrive to that since acquisition to beginning of current year depending on the dates given. So here it will be the retained earnings. So it will be the retained earnings at the beginning as a statement of changes in equity of the 15,000. Then we less the one which was at acquisition. 10,000. So in this case, it means it's going to be a favorable balance of 5,000, so we're going to add it. It's not going to be minus. Now we come to the issue where our information to dwell more. Now we have the current year. On the current year, we as the subsidiary, we had the profit of uh, from our statement of uh, 
changes in equity versus the statement of a uh, profit and loss our subsidiary had a profit of 23000 so from the profit of 23000 uh, on the since acquisition it will result the 18400 and then the nci it will be the 4.6 now it will be the part of the dividend here but based on the information given there won't be any dividend paid because they mentioned that subsidiary had no intention of declaring the dividends that's the reason the dividend is nearly here to declare or pay a dividend. So in this case, our dividends, they will remain at nil for the current year because subsidiary mentioned that he does not have intention to declare the dividend. So from page 166, it will be the elimination purpose, which we're going to eliminate on the ad acquisition part. We all, you already know how to eliminate the 100,000 of the share capital plus the retained earnings of the 10,000 versus the amount which we paid for the consideration of 88,000. The non controlling of 22,000, we know it comes from this figure. And then uh, the retained earnings of 1,000, the retained earnings of 1,000 comes from here. And then uh, the non controlling interest was the, the contra account to this, it will be the NCI while we are eliminating what the retained earnings. And then the non controlling interest of 4.6, it comes from this figure. And the main reason here is based on the profit for the year that was realized. So we are eliminating the NCI of the SFP versus the NCI of the statement of change in. in uh, statement of a uh, comprehensive income now the another thing that's going to be eliminated there if you check uh, on the abridged uh, statement of financial position we had a current account with b limited of ten thousand and the current account with a limited of ten thousand so those things two things they need to be eliminated so the current account of a i mean the current account of b limited it was having a figure of 10,000, which it was sitting. Uh, we don't have the exact amount on based on the debit and the credit had. So they don't mention which one was OK. Normally, the current account, they have a balance on the credit side. So we should do the favorable balance. So the favorable balance is on the credit side as 10,000. So the current account of, of A limited, the current account of A limited is a favorable balance of 10,000. So since it's a favorable balance of 10,000, it needs to be eliminated and be put on the debit side of our journal because we are eliminating that a uh, positive figure. And then the current account of B limited was having a unfavorable balance which it was sitting on the debit side because normally the asset they are sitting on the debit side so it was sitting on the debit side so it needs to be eliminated by putting it on the credit side that's why they say the current account with b in the a limited is sitting at ten thousand on the credit side and the current account with a on the b limited is sitting at ten thousand then from there since we eliminated any common item then we can consolidate the rest. So the PPE, the 330, the 330 plus the 170, we know how to arrive there is based on the information from our sitting financial position. And then the trade and other receivable of 28 and 36 is also come from the sitting financial position. So we go to the equity part and the liabilities. So the share capital will now be based on the only share capital of the parent because the one for subsidiary was eliminated. So the share capital of the parent from the statement of change in equity is sitting at 200,000 because the 100,000 was eliminated. 
when we're doing the performance journal. Then the retained earnings of 142,400, it comes as a result of, it will be the profit. When we do our SCE, it will be the 88,000 as the balance of the, in the beginning of the year, which it will, the balance at the beginning of the year of 88 will come as a result of the 84,000 plus this 4,000. So it will be the 84,000 at the beginning of the year for parent, then plus the 4,000 from the subsidiary, then they will give you the 88,000. So the 88,000 will be the balance at the beginning. If you can refer to your SCE on page uh, 168, you will see the retained earnings balance at the beginning sitting at 88,000, 88, which it will be the 84 for the balance at the beginning of the retained earnings of the parent plus the 4,000 from the analysis of shareholders of the subsidiary. Then we have the profit for the year. So the profit for the year will come as a result of the abridged uh, consolidated sentiment of changes, I mean, sentiment of uh, profit and loss, which it will be found on page uh, 167 which we have the profit of uh, 74,000 so out of the 74,000 we have to do the one attributable to the owners of the parent and the one for non-controlling so the one attributable to the owners of the parent equal to 69,400 so it will be the profit for there to be added on the retained earnings of the consolidated one then you will have the dividend paid by the subsidiary which is 15,000 Therefore, our total amount, which represent our retained earnings at the end of the year, will be sitting at 142,400. That's where we get that retained earnings of in the consolidated statement of financial position as the amount of 142,400. So the non control interest of 27.6, it will come from the balance shown on the, the total balance of adding all the NCI. When you go further, you're going to add like on your pro forma journal, you see there is a third column that we do and we show as an NCI. So that's where you're gonna arrive to that amount of twenty seven thousand six hundred, which is also the amount represented by the analysis of shareholders as the NCI. When you add this twenty two thousand and you add with the remaining things, so these things they will give you then a balance of twenty seven thousand uh, six hundred. So this 27,600, that's, that's the balance that you're gonna get when you add this, it will be the one to be used as, as, as NCI on your balance sheet. Then from there, we're gonna go to the current liabilities, which it will be the trade and other payables of 136 plus 58 as presented on the abridged uh, statement of uh, financial position from our example before the adjustments. Then when we add the equities and the liabilities, they will give us the 564, which will match to our assets as 564. So the statement of changes, as the of profit and loss, there is no any changes there because there was no any other common items to be eliminated. So you just take the same balances which they were shown in the statement of profit and loss. You just add them 73 plus 33, 22 plus 10, and then you less them, then from there you get your 74,000 as your profit. Then you, you are pushing according to the one for the owner's equity of the, the owners of the parent versus the non controlling. So now, with this example, there was nothing major to be discussed here. But now let's tackle the situation where subsidiary now paid the dividends but there was no provision made. So example two, so in this one, uh, subsidiary, So this was the main thing that we we're focusing. The subsidiary we didn't, we didn't pay any dividends. Mm -hmm. 
Now we're going to have a situation where the subsidiary now pay the dividend. Subsidiary pays the dividend. Okay, in this case now, we are given an information as the abridged uh, statement of financial position, statement of uh, profit and loss, plus the situation's in equity. And then we have a transaction whereby they say A limited acquired the interest in B limited on 1 January 2007, on which they, they retain A means of the B limited amount to 10,000. Consider the key amount of the assets and liabilities of B limited to be equal to the fair value thereof on the date of acquisition. So the information given here, it will be the same information that was presented on this analysis of shareholders. The only difference will be the dividends part. So we can copy all the information here and then we paste it on our second example because it will be the same information. Now we come to the situation of the current year. On the current year, there was a profit realized of 23,000 and then 18.4 and 4.6. Now we're going to have the dividends because now subsidiary decided to make the payment of the dividends. So there will be dividend paid. So on the dividend paid, the information presented on our statements. We see that subsidiary made a dividend payment of 12,000. So that payment of 12,000 is shown in the statement of changes in equity as per page 169. So the dividend paid by subsidiary will be 12,000. So out of this 12,000, we know that our parent will own the 30%. So the 30% which they will owe, it, I mean the 20%. I mean, 80%. So the 80%, which they will all be represented by an amount of 9,600. So it will be the 12,000 multiplied by the 80%, which is the amount owned by the parent, because the parent invested in subsidiary and he acquired 80% of the interest. So the amount will be represented by the 9,600. So this 9.6 9 will come here as the dividend paid, and it will be in the minus, it will be in the brackets because the subsidiary paid the dividend. And then the one which will be represented by the non-controlling, it will be the minus 2,400. Then we can balance the figures again. So it means our total will sit at one, 26 and then here we'll be sitting at 12.8 because it will be the 18 this 4 plus 18 then minus 9.6 and then here we'll be sitting on the 25,200 then we can do our pro forma consultations general so the pro forma consultation general the first portion of the shaker battle, it will be the same as the one in example one. The retained earnings of the 1,000, it will be the same as the one in example one again, because it comes from the analysis of shareholders. There was no change then. The non control interest of 4.6 will be the same as the one in example one. There is no changes. Now we have the dividends. So this 12,000 is the dividend declared by the subsidiary. But the 9.6 will be the dividend received by the parent. And then the 2.4 will be the dividend received by all other parties, the one which they don't own any majority in majority of the shareholding in the subsidiary. So now we need to eliminate this. The reason for elimination is because 
as the parent, we receive the 9.6, and we are now part of the group, which it will be the B limited. So since we receive the dividend of 9.6 from B limited, we need to eliminate them. So according to the elimination, the dividend received by A limited, it will be the total for 9.6. And then the non-controlling part of this of this dividend is represented by the 2.4. So the total dividend paid in total is 12,000. So normally the dividend paid is an expense. So when it's an expense, the expense will increase on the debit side. So initially when we we're recording these dividends on the books of a subsidiary, it was going to be debit, the dividends paid of 12,000. Then on the credit side, it will be the dividend received A limited, which it will be income in his book. Now they're going to go to the credit side as 9.6. And then the dividend received by the NCI people, it will represent by the 2.4. So the journal of A limit, the journal of subsidiary, it will be like this before the elimination. As a subsidiary, this is before elimination. So he was going to have the debit side and the credit side, whereby he will have dividend. Page. Because it's an expense which they increase on the debit side. So the debit side of this dividend was going to be represented by the whole amount of 12,000 because those are the dividends which he decided to pay. Then which he paid to who? He paid to A Limited. And A Limited, he will, he will get an amount of how much of the 9,600, which it will be the dividend received by him. And then another part, this will be the people outside the group. So the NCI will be the people outside the group, the non-controlling part. So it will also be the dividend received by them. Like, for example, suppose I was having the shares in the capital, in the share capital of a B limited, but I was not a majority shareholder. I was also entitled to get those dividends. So in this, it means in my case, the dividends I was going to receive from B limited, in my case, it was going to be 2.4. So it will be the 2,400. So this. Then we do the as the part of the intra group because of this is the one making them intra group. So this they need to be eliminated. So when we eliminate them, then we're gonna take them on the our performance journal. was in the journal of a in the journal of a he was going to have a bank which increased by 9.6 and the income of the dividends of 9.6. And then was this A and B A and B they form part of the group. So we're gonna eliminate based on this. But the C, pe C person as a non-controlling, he doesn't perform part of the elimination. 
So we're gonna use the, these things to eliminate. So we eliminate the 9.6. So the 9.6 elimination, it will be in the form of the dividend received, which is gonna go to the debit side, and then the 2.4, which must also go to the debit side as the non-controlling, then the dividend paid, this it will now go to the credit side. So we eliminate based on this. Anyone who have a question up to so far with regard to the elimination of the dividend uh, declared by subsidiary? Any question? Okay, I assume that there's no question. We proceed further. Then we're going to eliminate the same uh, individual amount of the current accounts. The current account which was saving by A limited and the current account which was saving by the B limited, depending on which one was the favorable. So in this case, the favorable one was the one for uh, B limited based on the amount you receive from A. So when we eliminate the one for B limited, it's going to go on the debit side, and then the one for ALIM is going to go to the credit side. So that will be the elimination part. Then the third example, or before we go to the third example, then since there is elimination of everything, then we have to prepare the statement of profit and loss, changes in equity, and then balance sheet. So the statement of profit and loss doesn't have any changes. It will be the same as the one of the previous example on example one. So we're going to add on the proof for tax, it will be the 73 plus 33 as based on the information given from the uh, pre-adjustment trial balance or pre-adjustment balance sheet on, I mean, pre-adjustment uh, statement of profit and loss on page 169. So we're going to say 73 plus 33. And then the income, there is no any other income because then that 9.6, that was shown as dividend received which the, the dividend declared by the subsidiary is now eliminated as per the journal we did. So we no longer show them because they are gone now. So it will be the 73 plus 33 as our gross profit or the profit before tax because the 9.6 is gone. And then from there, we have an income tax expense. We don't change to be the 22 plus 10 and then we call 32. And then from there, we have the profit for the year, which is represented by the 74,000. And then we're going to uh, share it according to the owners of the parent versus the non-controlling. So the owners of the parent will be represented by the 69,400, and the non-controlling will be the 4.6. Then the total of the profit will be sitting at 74,000. Then we go to the statement of change in equity. So it will be the opening balance of the share capital, which it comes from the one of the parent, because the one of a subsidiary is eliminated. Then we go to the retained earnings. We have the balance on the retained earnings for parent as 84,000, which it will be the balance at the beginning. Then we add with the 4,000 from the retained earnings of the subsidiary, because we owe, we do owe the percentage there. From that 5,000, we owe the 80% of it. So it means we as the parent or we as the group, we must keep take the 4,000 there, then we add it with our 10 earnings balance at the beginning, then it will sit on the 88,000. Then we check any movement happened during the year. So there was a profit realized by the group of the 69,400, which will be represented by the profit of the owner's equity of the parent. And then there was a dividend declared. So the dividend declared by parent is the one for 15,000 and they've got nothing to do with any dividend declared by the subsidiary. So we less the 15,000. So we're gonna our close our 10 earnings with an amount of 142,400. So from there, we go to our statement of financial position. So the asset section is to remain constant as the same as the one in the previous example. There was no any major changes there. Then the share capital, Part, it will be the 200,000 from the one group, uh, shown in the statement of changes in equity, the consolidated one. And then uh, we have the retained earnings, which will be the balance of 142,400 at the end, represented by the consolidated balance on the retained earnings. 
from the steel merchants in equity. And then we add them all together. They give us 342,400. So we've got NCI, which should be the one from the, our, our analysis. When we add this, after we check out the consideration part, when we add them all together, it will give us the 25,200. Then the current liabilities, they will be the same as the one on the example one, whereby we're going to be the 126,400 plus the 20,000 which they'll be sitting on 196,400. So when we add them all together, they give us the 564,000. So that will be our total figure for both equity and the liabilities. Any question up to so far? Any question? Okay, I assume that there's no question. When we proceed further, so now let's tackle the issue of the comment. They say, we always eliminate the dividend paid by the subsidiary. So this is a note that you must also note in your exam. As long as the subsidiary have paid the dividend, those dividends declared by subsidiary, they need to be eliminated because the parent will gonna able to uh, acquire certain share of those dividends. If I am the parent, I'm owning 60% interest there. So it means the minimum subsidiary declared the dividends. I must get the 60% share from those dividends declared by him. If I'm the parent and I owe 95%, so the minute my subsidiary declared the dividends, I must get the 95% of those dividends. So the, those dividends, when they get into my books, before I consolidate, I need to eliminate them. So they will be eliminated in the form of pro forma journal. Then they say the dividend paid normally have a debit balance. While the dividend received they have a credit balance as, as it's an income, fine. We all know that that is before elimination. But when we do the elimination, so it will be the reversal of those uh, movements. So you have to reverse everything. So whatever have a debit balance needs to go to have a credit balance. And whatever had a credit balance initially, it's going to have a debit balance. So to eliminate the dividend, we debit the dividend amount to 9.6 received by A limited. So A limited initially received the dividends of A from B limited of 9.6. So initially it was on the credit side. So because we are eliminating them, they're going to go to the debit side. And then uh, we credit the dividends paid by subsidiary, which subsidiary paid the dividends of 12,000. So that 12,000 was on the debit side. Now it must go to the credit side. So the difference between the 12,000 and the 9.6 it will be represented by the NCI, which will be a balancing figure. So the balancing figure in the journal is a debit balance of 2.4. We debit the non control interest there by reducing the balance in the same financial position as the non control owners realize a portion of their share in the profit in the form of a dividend receipt. So the journal for elimination will be the dividend received A limited 9.6, the dividend paid by B limited 12,000 on the credit side. So the 12,000 minus the 9.6 will be represented by the 2.4. The 2.4, we're going to call it a non controlled interest, which normally is a balancing figure there. Now we go to the third example. But before we proceed to the third example, I also want to check is there anyone who has a question up to so far? Memory, do you have any question? Sorry, I just joined now. Okay. Okay. Good. So we are... Can Who I wanna just... ask? Okay. Sorry. Tagalani? Yes. Um, so yes. on the journals, on the elimination journals, like we, we did the one for, for the books of A, and then you, you do it again on the group, because uh, there was the one that you did, which was like just then, 9,600 9, you debited and credited. And so now there's also for the group, which like you credit the whole 12,000 and then debit 9.6 for A, and then like the, the different, it's, uh, it's, for, it's for B. Like, you see, on your, on your, let's say on the journal for A limited, I mean for B limited, when he will be doing his own journal, he won. He will have this. Like, let's let's make it like this. Uh, let's say you 
are the parent, ne? The Kalani. Yes. So I am the subsidiary. I as then I will do the dividend. So when I declare the dividend in my journal, I will record dividend paid, which is my expense, right? As 12,000. So the dividend that I paid, I paid to who? To, it will be the dividend received by who? By the shareholders. So initially here it was supposed to be 12,000. Irrespective of whether I paid you plus other people, ne? initially, before me and you forming the group, here it was supposed to be dividend received by my shareholders as full amount of 12,000. Yes. You get it, ne? Yeah. That is before the consultation. And then you come to me and say, no, uh, I want to own certain percentage of shares in your company. And then we do whatever we draft, and then you, we agree that you're going to now owe 80%, right? Mm -hmm. So in future, when I declare the dividend, Initially, you were just a shareholder, but you were not a, you were not part of my group. You were just a ordinary person. But now, because you want me and you to be the group, so in future, when I declare the dividends, it will be the dividend paid of twelve thousand, which is fine. Then, because now you are my group, so I have to show that you, as a Tandeka, you will receive, I mean, as Dagalan, you will receive the dividend of nine point six, right? Yes. And then the other group, so the other group which they are non-controlling, the one which they don't owe any majority shares in me, they will, they will get 2.4, which in this case, the people which they get 2.4, it can be the likes of BC, where the likes of a Tandega, Stephen, Mary, and Memory. They are the one which they're going to share the 2.4 among themselves. But you, as the Galani, you are entitled to the amount of 9.6 because you are forming part of my group. So now, because me and you, we are heavy, it's like we are a one entity. So when we do the consolidation, because you are my parent now, you have to reverse this 9.6 that you got. Because me and you, we are, it's like you got, it's like you got 9.6 from yourself alone. Hmm. I don't know if you get me. Yes, I, I get that. So is it you who have a cell phone ringing? Yes. If it's not you, if it's not you, then the person please mute. Okay. So since you have the you you got yourself an, an amount of 9.6 mm -hmm. so you need to reverse this this 9.6 because it's like you got it from yourself alone so it's an inter intra group it's like you took the 9.6 from your bank a and you put in your bank b so as a as the end this this money belongs to you all of them from bank a to bank b yes. so it doesn't make any difference mm -hmm. you get it so this 9.6 now, because you are making the group, you have to reverse it. So when you reverse it, because initially it was an income to you, so you reverse it as if, as if, as if like you, you make it an expense. So you're going to make an expense of 9.6 on the debit side. You will say the dividend which I have initially received. I'm going to put them on the debit side. So you say dividend received as 9.6. This dividend I received, they come from who? They come from the dividend paid by Stan. Dividend paid. So, and he paid an amount of how much? Of 12,000. So, the balancing figure between the two, it will be the 2.4. And that 2.4, it will be represented by the NCI, the non controlling interest. So, the NCI, it will be the same people which they got those dividends, the likes of the memory, uh, Tandega, Stephen, and Buisi. Does it make sense now? So here, the purpose of this consolidation here, you are reversing whatever you've done here in your book alone, when you are declaring the dividends or when you are receiving the dividends from the dividend declared by Stan. Okay. Is it fine now? Yes. So before you eliminate, it's important to have the journal or how was the stand going to account this dividend alone? So me alone, when I was accounting this uh, dividend, I was going to say it's dividend paid and then the amount on the credit side, it will be dividend received by you. So now you do the journals on your side because now you want to reverse them. Okay. Okay. And then uh, another question from anyone? Before we proceed further to 
the example three, where now the dividend are declared by the subsidiary and then there is a provision made. I used to be able to see my my sharing because it tells me that it's paused. Can you still see my Excel? Yes. Okay. Okay, let's proceed. Now we have uh, example three. So in example three, subsidiary declared the dividend. And subsidiary declared the, declaring the dividends, but before he was declaring the dividends, those dividends, they were, pro, they were made provision by the parent. So in this case, it's like me and you, we are in the group and then you are owing much percentage or greater percentage in me. But initially, me, I was not, I was not attending to declare the dividends, but you made a provision that, okay, I guess the, along the way, Molepo is going to declare the dividends at the end of the year. So let me make a provision for the dividend that you're going to declare. So I assume that Molepo is going to declare a dividend of, of 10,000. So, and you know that when he declared the dividend of 10,000, you as the parent, you owe 80% in me. So it means you are also making a provision that you're going to receive the dividends of 8,000 from me, provided I declare those dividends. So now in this case, you as the parent, we made a provision that I'm going to declare the dividends. And indeed, I declare the dividends. And then you made a provision, then you you made a provision that you're going to receive the dividends from me. And indeed, now I materialize that provision. Now you receive the dividends. So now let's see how this thing is going to be tackled. So we have the same information from our previous two examples. The PPEs, 330 and the investment of 88,000, the trade and other receivable of 28, the current account of V Limited. Now the current account changed because Initially, that side, the current account was 10,000, but now the current account is 19.6. And then um, we have the share capital ordinary, 200, 100, didn't change. Retain earnings, 129, 626, it didn't change. The current account of 10,000 for the, the, for the credit side, it didn't change. The three and other payables, 136 and 58. So that side is changed because initially it was 126 and then the dividend payable is 12,000. Now we have a profit before tax from the sustainable profit, profit before less, before tax, before any adjustment is 82 and 83. Income tax 22 and 10, then profit for the year 60 and 23. Then we have a sustainable change in equity, the 200 for parent, 100 for subsidiary, 84, retained earnings for the parent, 15, for subsidiary, and then we have the total of A and B. Then we have the dividend declared by A limited 15, the dividend declared by B limited at the end of the year 12, and then we have the information. A limited acquired its interest in B limited on 1 January 2007, on which date the retained earnings of B limited amount to 10. Consider the carry amount of these assets and the liabilities of B limited to EB equal the fair value thereof on the date of acquisition. So our analysis, it doesn't change. The analysis will remain the same from the top until since acquisition. So the same information that was there, it will go again. So here we have a subsidiary paying the dividend, but the parent made a provision. Here. So it will be subsidiary. Case the dividend and parent made a provision. So in terms of a timeline for this. It's like as the parent, 
government will say, okay, on 1 January, the financial year for these people is ending December. Let's say on 1 January, A limited. A, a provision. Or the dividend. Be declared by subsidiary on eighty one twelve twenty twenty one. So that is the transaction on the first. Then on the thirty first, on the one point one two twenty twenty one. B limited Le dividend of twelve thousand for its shareholders. So since B limited declared a dividend of twelve thousand to its shareholders, A limited which is the one who made the provision. A limited who made a provision will now be entitled to dividend receivable of 9.6, which will come as a result of the 12,000 times 80% uh, So now let's see this thing, how you're going to tackle it. So the analysis of shareholders doesn't change as usual, it's the same as the, the previous one. Now we go to the current year. On the current year for subsidiary purposes. On the current year, we have a profit, which will be the 23,000 as shown in the page, page one of 74. We have a profit of 23,000. So my parent is entitled to 18,400 and my subsidiary is entitled to 4.6. I mean, my non-controlling interest. So me as the subsidiary, I now declare the dividend. It was he as the parent made the provision. He made a provision here, and then I declare. So this it will be the recording of the dividend declared by me here. So I declare the dividend of how much? 12,000. And then, uh, he as the parent will be entitled to 9.6. And then uh, the non-controlling people will be entitled to the 2.4. So for the for the situation where the parent make a provision and then the subsidiary indeed declare the dividend, it doesn't show any, it doesn't have any impact on as as compared to the situation where there was no provision but subsidiary declared. So it doesn't have any impact at all. So when you go to your journal, the only situation where you're gonna see it will be on the journal part. So the first part, like the share capital part on page 176, it will remain the same. The retained earnings portion will remain the same. 
the non-controlling portion will remain the same. Then the dividend received of A limited and non-controlling of 2.4 and the dividend declared of 12,000 is the same example that I was dealing with. It will remain the same. Now we just add a smaller portion. And the smaller portion that we add is because of they made a provision and then indeed the dividend was declared. So there was the dividend paid by my subsidiary. So subsidiary paid a dividend of 12,000. So out of the 12,000, I as the parent, I'm entitled to the 9.6. So because I make a provision that he must declare the dividends and indeed he declared the dividends. For me, by making the provision, uh, if you can check on the pre-adjustment trial balance, there was the current account. Do you see on page 174, there is a current account to be limited of nine in the A limited section. There is a current account to be limited of 19.6. Do you see that amount? I would request a feedback so that I know we are on the same page. Yes. Okay. And then uh, when we check on the current account of A Limited in the books of B Limited, it's sitting at 10,000. Do you see that? So there is a provision that I, as a limited, I'm making a provision that a limited must declare the dividend. And out of the dividends that he's going to declare, I must reduce the current account. The current account that he has on me, I'm going to reduce it by using the dividend he's going to declare. I don't know if I make a point there. B limited is saving a current account with me as A limited. My current account is sitting at 19,000. So here's the books of B of A limited. So the current account of A, I mean of B, LTD is sitting at 19,600 and I, as A Limited, I'm having the current account I'm having the current account so here it will be the B Limited the current account of a well, 10,000. So since me as a limited, I'm having the current account in B limited as 10,000. And he have the current account in me with 19.6. At the end, we must have the equal current account. So in order to reduce his current account in my books, I'm going to utilize the share that he's going to declare. So all the shares that he's going to declare, instead of me receiving them and keeping them on my side, I'm going to use the shares or the dividend that I'm going to receive from him to reduce his current account in my books. So that at the end, his current account will be equal to my current account. Does it make sense there? I, may I ask a question, Mr. Malek? Mm. So I think I'm confused by the whole um, current account um, situation initially and what it means to um, for the parent to, um, to expect a dividend from um, the subsidiary. So the current account, does it mean that they each owe each other money or is it the normal bank account that we... No, like in this case, they owe each other money. Okay. Yeah, they right. owe each other money. So in this case, um, initially, they like if they I owe you 10,000 and you also meet 10,000, so at least it's going to cancel each other. Then when we eliminate, okay. it's going to be simple. But in this case, um, 
fee limited owing owe an amount of 19.6 in A limited, while A limited owe an amount of 10,000 in B limited. So in this case, the deficit amongst this it will be represented by a 9.6. So it means like um, B limited owe an amount of 9.6 in B limited. So because now we're gonna do the we're gonna consolidate, we have to reduce that uh, that amount which you owe in A limited. So it will be re reduction from the current account. But however, we're gonna utilize what the dividends that you're gonna declare. Because initially this dividend was supposed to be an income in my side. But I don't wanna represent them as an income. Instead, I want to utilize them to reduce their scholarly analyst one from my side. Okay. I don't know if it makes and, sense. Yeah, that part does make a, a bit of sense. But then, so when, when the parent now makes a provision for a dividend declared mm. by a subsidiary. Mm -hmm. Okay. What I'm the trying to understand is, is it, is it, does the parent say, definitely this year, you will definitely declare a dividend of so much? Mm -hmm. he's, make, he's making a provision that you, you need to declare the dividend of this much. But it, which it will be based on the performance. Okay. So All if right. the performance was bad, the, the subsidiary will not be able to declare the dividend. So it means that amount which you owe on me, it will keep on increasing. I see. Okay. All right. Yeah. So the parent made a provision that you must declare the dividend of so much. So in order to cover this amount that you owe of 9.6, I will say, okay. You owe an amount of 9.6 in my side. So it's like the 9,600 is the amount that you owe on me. And I owe, I have an interest of 80% in you. So it divided by 80%. So if you can say 9.6 divided by 80%, it will give you the 12,000. So it means the provision is like you have to declare the dividends of 12,000 so that you can able to patch the, the, the amount that you owe in my, in my, in my current account. So it makes sense by using this equation. So it's like you owe me, then you have to declare the dividend. It doesn't mean stipulate how much dividend you need to declare, but the subsidiary as you know that you already owe 9.6. So in order to cover that the whole amount of 9.6, at least he must declare a dividend of 12,000 or more. So now the subsidiary declared the dividend of 12,000. So after delivering the dividend of 12,000, the dividend received by me as the parent, I received the 9.6, which it, 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 it purchased the amount which, I, he, which he was owing on my side. So in, instead of using the 9.6 as my income, now I use the 9.6 against the current account. So now I will say on the debit side, I'm say the dividend payable by B limited, it will be 9.6. And then instead of uh, acquiring them as a dividend received in my side as an income, then I reverse the current account because the current account was having a debit balance of 19.6. Now I want to make it to have a credit balance of 9.6 so that I can reduce it to be equal to the same 10,000 that I have in his books. So the 9.6 will be utilized to cancel that deficit of 9,600 from the current account of A limited. That's why it's saying that the, 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 the narration is a transfer of the relevant share of dividend due by B limited to the current account of A limited. So does that generally make sense? A confirmation? I assume that it makes sense. So since we re reduced the amount of uh, the 9.6, so it means from the dividend received from B limited, they're now making us to have the same equal amount of the current account. So since now we have the same equal amount of the current account, we need to eliminate the, all those current accounts. So it means as A limited, we have a current account of 19.6, 
and then the B Limited will also have the current account of 19.6. So we eliminate them. So now we no longer have any, any amount which we owe our amount each other as current account. So it's cancelled and then it's gone. Then everything remaining, it can be used as a consolidation. A question, Dagalani? Okay, if um, B Limited did not uh, declare the dividends, like, will this be carried to the next financial year? So it means in this case, it was going to be carried as the into the next financial year. So it means our current account for A Limited will be sitting at 19.6, but the current account of B Limited was still going to continue sitting at 10,000. So since they don't balance to each other, that 19.6 was still going to be carried to the next financial year in the books of A Limited. Because if you can check on page 176, now we are eliminating the current accounts because now the current account they balance each other because because of the dividend declared by who by B Limited. So the dividend declared by him instead of me receiving them as A Limited, I I transfer them into his current account so that our current account can be equal. Okay. All right, Tandega, you have any question? No, no question, Mr. Muller. Thank you. And then Stephen. Stephen, uh, I think you have a problem with your mic, but I will assume that you're OK. If you are not, try to type. At least I can see your question, then we'll continue. Mary? Um, no question. OK. Memory? No question. All right, uh, we can proceed further. Then the elimination will be based on anything that uh, it was not accounted as the elimination, it will now be consolidated. So the PPE of 330 and plus the 170 will be consolidated. The trade and other receivable of 28 plus 36 will be consolidated. Then the share capital, it will be the one for the parent coming from the statement of change in equity as 200,000 on page 178. And then the retained earnings, it will be the one of 84,000 of the balance at the beginning of a parent plus the 4,000 of the balance of the subsidiary based on this amount. Then they give us the 88. And then uh, the profit for the year, it will be based on the one attributable to the owners of the parent in the page 177 after making the consolidated statement of profit and loss, which will be sitting at 69,400. And then uh, the dividend paid, declared paid, it will be the 15,000, which it will be the one paid by parent. Because the one of the subsidiary, they are being eliminated because they are being used against the current account. Then from the information on the stimulus change liquidity versus the information on the Statement of profit and loss and the statement of a uh, balance sheet. There is no any other major differences. The only difference that we will realize it will be the one of on the current liabilities. They have the dividend payable. So the dividend paid by the subsidiary initially because it's not the one for the parent. The dividend paid by the subsidiary, he paid sub dividend of 12,000. However, out of the 12,000, we said no, the 9.6 must be utilized against your current account. So it seems like as a group, we only going to say we will declare the dividend of 2.4 towards our non-controlling interest. Because here, the reason now we record the 2.4, it comes as a result of we made a provision that we're going to declare the dividend. Remember, when a parent make a provision towards subsidiary, since we are in the group, it seems like the provision was made by the parent himself to declare the dividend. So in the group, in the group context, we made a provision to declare the dividend of certain percentage towards our non-controlling interest. Can I ask you to please repeat what you said about the fifteen thousand that is uh, on the A limited side? 15,000 dividends. 
Okay, on the retained earnings, or the dividend, or you refer to the dividend declared on the current liabilities on the SFP. Which one are you? Do you um, want? Referring to the fifteen thousand on the A limited side, because okay. yeah, the twelve thousand was was uh, declared and then it was distributed according to the eighty twenty. Okay. Yeah. On the retained earnings, right? There is a dividend declared and paid. So those dividends, they are declared by the parent himself and paid. Remember, on the parent, this is like this, uh, is subsidiary, which is 80%. But the parent part is 100%. So the parent is 100%. So any de shares declared by the parent, it will be going to other shareholders, which is not even B limited, it's not even involved because B limited doesn't own any share in, in the A limited at all. So the dividend declared by a parent, they go to other shareholders. So those ones, they're going to full as the raw as they are, they are. You declare them and you pay to the shareholders outside the group. But the dividend of the subsidiary, the 12,000 part is the one which have an impact on the current liabilities. The impact comes as a result of this follows. He declared the dividend of 12,000. And the parent, which is controlling subsidiary, made a provision that you be limited. You need to declare the dividend of 12,000. But out of the 12,000 that you're going to declare, I am going to get my portion of 9.6. And the 9.6 portion that I'm going to get, I'm going to utilize it against the current account that you're having against me. So I'm going to utilize it towards the current account so that my current account and your current account, they will balance. So the difference of 2.4, it will be the liability towards us as the group, which we need to pay towards other people or the people outside the group. So since is a liability. We still have to record it in our books as a liability, and then we're gonna pay it towards the shareholders, uh, maybe in the next financial year, because the dividend will be declared today, but they are not yet paid. Because the dividend they declared and pay and be paid in the future date, in most cases, they are not declared and paid simultaneously. So in this case, we declare the dividend of twelve thousand. So out of the twelve thousand, you take the nine point six towards the current account of the B Limited so that our current account can be equal. So the remaining balance of the 2.4, which is now goes to the non-controlling interest, it will be the dividend payable in the future date. I don't know if I make point there. Yes. Okay. So which is now we have, if you check on your current liabilities under the statement of financial position, we have the amount of 2,400. That amount of 2,400 represents the amount which it owed to the non-controlling interest after the dividend declared by the subsidiary. After we, as the parent, we took our 9.6 share on those dividends and utilize it towards the current account of that particular subsidiary. Okay. And then any question? Up to so far. Mr. Monlepo, in a case where no dividend had been declared, how would um, current liabilities look? In the case where no dividend had been declared by, by the subsidiary? The subsidiary, yes. Okay. In that case, it will look like the one in example one. If you can check the one in example one, there was no dividend declared at all. So our current liabilities will be the similar to the one in page 167. So in most cases, suppose they were having, in this case, they were not having the current account. Suppose they were having the current account, the current account as shown in the pre-adjustment trial balance, will be the same current account to show in the consolidated. So it means if A Limited was having their current account as debit, 
and then believing that they the current account is credit. The way they are in their pre-adjustment trial balance, you're going to transfer them the way they are into the consolidated uh, statement of financial position because they don't have any impact because of the dividends because there was no dividend declared. Is it fine? Tandaga? Yes. Okay. Then we proceed with the example four. In the example four, the parent made no provision for dividends at all. However, I didn't make provision for the dividends, but the subsidiary decided to delay the dividends, even though I didn't make any provision. Because since I didn't make any provision, so it means uh, there was no impact that it's going to have on my current account because we assume that a uh, subsidiary is not entitled to pay anything to us. But he decided to delay the dividends because of out of his will or out of the profits he realized. And then he found that it will be a good thing to declare the dividend. So we're going to just get our 9.6. But since because we are in the group, we're going to just eliminate that 9.6. But before we go there, let's go to the comment based on the provisions. They say in this example, the subsidiary declared a dividend that it has not paid yet. So in this case, you declare the dividend, but it's not yet paid. That's why it's the provision part. In this example, the subsidiary declared dividend that it has not yet paid. In the subsidiary financial records, the dividend payable is a liability of 12,000. For the parent is a receivable asset of 9.6. We should eliminate the current accounts in the group what we owe each other against each other, but we can only do this once the accounts are equal. The 9.6 of the of the 12,000 dividends payable by B Limited are payable to A. We transfer the liability of 9.6 from the dividends payable to the current account. A Limited as both represent what payable to A Limited. Hence, dividend payable by B Limited is 9.6. Current account of A Limited will be 9.6. After making the entry above, the current account in B Limited is also equal to 90.6, which will be the 10,000 plus 9,600. And we can eliminate the two accounts against each other, which it will be the current account of A Limited is 19.6. The current account of B Limited in A Limited will be 19.6. So they are now eliminated. So it means the current account they no longer exist. So when we do our consolidation, there's no movement of the current account, which will be shown. Now we go to example four. In example four, the provision, the parent made no provision for the dividend. However, subsidiary decided to pay the dividend. So we've got the assets, we've got the equities. So it is the PPE, is the trade and other pay receivables, is the current account of 10,000. So on the equity and the liabilities, it's the share capital, retain any current account of 10,000, and then the trade and other payables of 136 and 58. And then the dividend payable is 12,000. So in this case, the dividend are payable. They will be declared, but not paid. So it means they'll be paid in the future. So let's see how it will be tackled. So the property for tax 73 and 33, income tax 22 and 10, then the profit for the year 51 and 23. So the statement of change in equity is uh, 200 as the balance at the beginning, the 100 as the balance for the subsidiary, the retained earnings as 84 as the balance for the parent, and the 15,000 as the parent as the balance for the subsidiary. Then we have the profit for the year of 51 and 23, the dividend declared ordinary 15,000 by the parent, 12,000 by the subsidiary. Then we go to the information. A limited acquired its interest in B limited on 1 January. On which day they retain earnings of the B limited amount of 10,000. Consider the carrying amount of assets liabilities equal to the failure on the date of acquisition. Then we have the analysis of shareholders, which will be the same as the one we did in the prior year, I mean, the prior examples. So, in this case, on the current year, now the dividends are declared of 12,000. So, A limited will be entitled to the 9.6, the non controlling people will be entitled to 2.4. So, we record the entry in the current account. So now 
we didn't make any provision. However, he decided to declare the dividend. So we're gonna receive the dividend. So when we receive the dividend, it will be dividend received in the books of A Limited alone. In the A Limited, there will be dividend received of 9.6 as an income, which they're gonna increase his current account of 9.6. So now it means that the current account of A Limited is now sitting on 19.6. But the current account of B Limited is sitting on 10,000. I don't need to make sense there. Is the opposite of that one? Is it clear before the elimination? Yes. Okay, let's continue. Now we do the proforma journals. We eliminate the share capital as usual. We eliminate the return earnings. We eliminate the non-controlling. Then the dividend received, which it will be those one. Like the elimination of the dividend received is based on that information on a journal number two. You see the information journal number two is the one that we're gonna use. So we received the dividend of 9.6, which it was dividend payable. Now we eliminate, we say dividend received will be 9.6. The non-controlling is the balance figure. We don't know it yet. So the dividend paid by subsidiary is 12,000. So we, now we're going to pay the dividend. Dividend paid, we're going to put on the credit side. So we say our 12,000 minus the 9.6, it becomes the 2.4. So our 2.4 will represent the balancing figure. So the balancing figure, we take it as a non-controlling interest. So in adjustment, in Journal number two, we recorded the dividend received and which they increase the current account. So now we are eliminating the same information which was done in journal number two. Now we are eliminating it in journal number three. So we're going to have the dividend payable of 9,600. 9, and then we reduce, we reduce them by using the current account. So the current account which A Limited was having as a result of increment, now it's going to be deducted because we are reversing it so that at the end, we're still going to remain with the same current account of 1010 towards each other, or we increase it towards the 19.6. So now the current account of A Limited it increases from initially, if you can check on the journal or on the pre adjustment trial balance, the current account of uh, a limited is sitting on 10,000 and the current account of B limited on the books of A is sitting at 10,000. So now the current account of A limited is gonna, on the books of A limited, it's gonna move from 10 to 9 to 19,000 as a result of the share which they will declare by B limited. So now for the elimination purposes, we eliminate the dividend payable 9,600. 9, the current account is 9,600. Now, as the elimination of the common item, which now we are eliminating the, the current account, they say current account of A Limited is now sitting at 19.6 and the current account of B Limited is sitting at 19.6. This one I will try to find the comment because I don't get it why they increase the current account of uh, A Limited to 19.6. Because the one for A, it was 10,000, and the one for B, it was also 10,000. So if we increase to 19.6, it doesn't balance because the one for B limited is still going to sit at 10,000. But if we now we're eliminating them using the 19.6, they don't make any, they don't make equal. So I have to find uh, information from the lecture. How do we eliminate them using 19.6? Because from my understanding, based on the general number two, the current account of B Limited must increase from 10,000 to 19.6. But the one for A Limited, the current account of A Limited in the books of B Limited, we're still sitting at 10,000. So if we eliminate them using the 19.6, both of them, while they were not equal, I don't get it. So I have to find the information on this current account. The last journal, 
on the proforma journal, I'm gonna make a question on it. And then maybe the lecture can able to give me the a better explanation because if I check the comment, it says the only difference between this example and example three is, is in this example the PEP parent has not accounted for the dividend receivable of 19.6 yet. That is why there is an entry in a limited individual record first to account for this before we make the consolidation general. We do not adjust the pre report tax with the 19.6 as in the example three. There are general where dividend receivable are debited and credited with 9.6. In this example, they are counted out each other. I will make a follow up on the elimination of the common item based on the current account because I don't get it why we are <coughs> using the 19.6. Dakalani? Right. Um, I just want to confirm something as well that when when the parent declare and then the subsidiary must. Uh, I mean, when the parent have an expectation and then the subsidiary must declare and then pay the following year if they do have a profit. So is it like now when the subsidiary declare and then the parents must now make a provision to, to expect it? Is it supposed to be that way? Okay. Um... In this case, the, the subsidiary declared while the parent didn't expect anything. So since the par since the subsidiary declared the dividend this year, which will be payable in the future, because they, we assume that they declared them on the 31st of December. So now the parent is going to expect that 9,600 as an income in the following year. I don't know if you answered your question or you need further clarity. Um, maybe further clarity because yeah that's um unless if you can show like based on ask that you must make a, a a declaration that they're going to receive they can't just receive it without making a declaration yes the, the parent the subsidiary will now have to as he declared the dividend he have to sign that okay now i declare the dividend of this much which i'm gonna pay them on this date Okay. Are you answered or the question? Sorry, I didn't hear that because of uh, at the same time I was trying to read uh, the comment, the second bullet on the comment. Okay, the second bullet. Okay, it says we do not adjust. You re, you you refer to that one. Yes, okay, we, yes, we do not adjust. Yes. Okay, we do not adjust the profit before tax with the nine thousand six hundred as in example three. The adjusters where dividend receivable all are debited and created with 9,600 in this example. This cancel out. Hmm? They are generous where dividend receivable are debited and credited with 9,600 in this example. They cancel out each other. The dividend receivable 9.6 I'm thinking okay. that uh, I think if well, we can okay you see the example not the example the journal of the dividend received by a limited the one for elimination purposes mm -hmm. after after the four the four point six of non controlling this dividend received by A limited is 9.6, you see? And then the dividend payable by B limited is also 9.6. Mm -hmm. So since now we are in the group, this is like that we don't have to show that in the statement of a profit and loss because this, this kind of elimination, they, they, trick, each, they trick each other. Was yes. I as A limited, I'm receiving the dividend, and you as B limited, you are paying the dividend. And while yeah. me and you were in the same group, so you are paying, I'm receiving. However, me as the receiver, I also owe you. Okay. Is that not why they cancel each other? Because of yes. the same group? Yes, because they are in the within, within the, it's within the group. 
It's like okay. me and you and the same entity. I make a profit. This profit is belongs to me, but the certain percent also belongs to you. So when I pay the profit, I pay it to you, but you are already owing me at all in like in the invented commas. So I'm, it's like I'm paying the same person price. So that's why we have to cancel each other. Mm -hmm. Another question. So now the follow up that I need to do is with regard to the current account, because my assumption was like it was only the current account of B limited, which was increasing. The one of A limited was remaining at 10,000, but now when they say they eliminate them because now they are equal. I don't get it. Why now they are equal? Because the other one is still, from my assumption, I thought it's still sitting at 10,000. Or is there, is there anyone who understands why we eliminate the current account by using the 19,600 for both sides? Maybe someone have a better understanding on this. Okay, silently, I will assume that no one have a better understanding on why we eliminate the current account using the 19,600 based on that they both in the beginning, their current account was sitting at 10,000 and then now we receive the dividends of 9.6, which they have to increase one current account while the other one should remain sitting on 10,000. Okay, it will be the NB part. From my side, I will have to make a follow up. As soon as I get the answer, then I will be able to share it. I don't know because since you, the lectures, they are not operating from the campus. So it will be via by email. So I don't know when I'm going to get the response from them. So from there, it will be the consolidation, which will start with the statement of profit and loss. The profit before text, it will be the 106 come from the 73 plus the 33 of the profit before tax. The income tax expense, 22 plus 10, give us the 32, and then give us the 74,000. And then uh, we attribute the one to the parent, which will be the 69,400. Then we go to the 10 minute change in equity. So we already know how to arrive to that 88,000 because from Example one until now, example four, it's just using the same thing. And then the 69,400 of the profit, we know how to arrive there. The dividend declared of ordinary thousand of ordinary shares, the 15,000, we know how to arrive there. So the only difference that we will realize, which this example is not different to example four. Oh, I mean, example three. Yeah, just the same. The dividend payable it will be the one which is it will be the tricky part there, but it's also the same as the one we did in example three, whereby the subsidiary declared the dividend and then dividend payable is twelve thousand. So after the twelve thousand, we left the nine point six entitled by the parent. So the one which must be payable to us, the shareholders outside the group, which we we're gonna regard it as a liability, it will be the one of two thousand four hundred. Any question up to so far? So now, in example five, they say subsidiary didn't make any provision towards declaring the dividend. So it means at the beginning, he didn't promise anyone to declare the dividend. However, it happened that at the end of the year, he now declared the dividend. So let's read example five. The subsidiary made no provision for the dividend. Then the following statement represents the approach financial statement of A Limited and its subsidiary B. A Limited and A Limited 
got the PPE, the investment, the street and other receivable, the current account, which is CGN 10,000, the share capital 200, 100, retain in 120, 38, current account 10,000, trade in other payables 136 and 58, the profit for tax 73 and 33, income tax 2210, and then the same change in equity, which is still the same as the one of the prior year, except the situation whereby on the retained earnings, the dividend paid by the ordinary 15,000, there is no dividend paid by the subsidiary there. And then uh, we have uh, information that A Limited acquired its interest in B Limited on 1 January, on which they the retained earnings of B Limited amount to 10,000. Consider the key amount of this as and the liabilities of B Limited equal to the fair value thereof on the date of acquisition. Now, from the same which is iniquity, there was no declaration of the dividends. But now, as an adjustment, they tell us that on 31 December 2009, B Limited decided to, decided to declare the dividend of 12,000. So it means he declared the dividend of 12,000, which they will be payable in the next financial year. So based on the analysis of shareholders, no changes. From example, two, three, four, and five, analysis of shareholders doesn't have any changes. Still the same. Then let's see the pro forma journals. Okay, now they say because B Limited has not yet made a provision for the dividend and A Limited has not yet reacted to it, we only provide for the dividend owing to the non controlling owners, as we would have eliminated the dividends between A and B Limited at, at any way. So the dividends which will be receivable by A Limited and the dividend paid by B Limited towards A Limited will be eliminated after all, because their dividend paid within intergroup, within the group, which will be regarded as the common item. So the only impact that it will be shown, it will be the one of the non-controlling interest, which it will be the one payable towards our NCI. So, this 2.4 is not the elimination, it's now what we're going to take it further towards our consolidation. So this one is not elimination, because the 2.4 is the what we need to pay in the following year as we declare the dividend now, so it will remain our liability. Because the 9.6, it will be the dividend received and it will also represent by the dividend payable. So on the debit side, there will be a dividend payable as elimination and the credit side, it will be the dividend receivable as elimination. Because when we're doing the individual journals, it was gonna be the dividend uh, paid in the, in the dividend paid on the debit side with bank and then dividend received on the credit side with bank in the individual uh, accounts, but that will be the, amount to be recorded in the following year. For the current year, it was going to only be the dividend payable, which will be on the credit side, and then the dividend receivable on the debit side, which however, the dividend receivable will be A limited, but the dividend payable on the credit side, which will be B limited in the current year. And then we eliminate those, it will be the opposite, then they will be gone. Then the one which is remaining out of that 12,000, it will be the 2.4. So the 2.4 will be represented by the non controlling interest. And then the credit side will be the dividend payable towards the non controlling interest in the following year. And this will re represent the liability towards the group as they will be paid next year. However, they were declared on the 31 December 2009. So the current, the current account will be eliminated as 10,000 towards each other, which this one, it makes sense as compared to the one of the eliminating the 19.6, which we don't know how to do to the 19.6. Then besides that, there is no any other uh, information that will be accounted for. 
because the 2.4 will be shown as a liability in the current liabilities of the SFP. Because it will be paid in the following year. It is declared now, but it will be paid in the following year. So the, re the rest will just remain the same as the one in the prior uh, examples. Like the minimum provision loss will remain the same. The statement of changes in equity, the 88,000, we know where it comes from. The 69,400, we know where it comes from. The dividend paid by ordinary is the 15,000 paid by the parent for the subsidiary part. It was not there on the pre adjustment trial, but I'm the pre adjustment, the minimum change in equity, there was no dividend paid by or declared, I mean, declared by a subsidiary. He just declared the dividend at the end of the year, but since there was no provision, they will be accounted for in the following year as a liability. The one declared towards the parent they will be eliminated immediately. So I don't see any comment there with regard to this. So all in all, you just have to know whether the dividend declared as a result of the provision or the dividend were declared straight away or there was a provision and declared because it can be provision and be declared or it can be no provision but they be declared as like example five or they can be no provision and no declaration and also where situation whereby it will be provision and also the declaration which it will be more of example three so anyone who have a question with regard to the treatment of the dividend which this one will come as a one line item in your exam they will tell you that they made a provision for the dividend and the dividend was not declared or they made a provision for the dividend and the dividend was declared or there was no provision but the dividend ended up being declared so it will just be like one line item and and mostly to be in the form in the subsidiary part because the one of the parent they are straight away they will be affecting the group but in this case it will be only the dividend from the subsidiary so that you can show them on your analysis of shareholders and also show them on your balance sheet whereby you show them uh, the one which they are declared but not yet paid because the minute they get paid they're not going to affect the liabilities in state Any question towards the declaration of the dividend by the subsidiary versus the provision by the parent? So the ordinary part is not complicated as compared to the preference because the preference will be complicated as a result of others that are being cumulative, others being non-cumulative. So is the one like nearly unit number nine is the one which should be more complex. So with regard to learning number eight, I'm going to only treat one question. I'm not going to treat two questions. I'll only treat one. And then from there, we go further to learning number nine. Well, it will be kind of a revision on learning number on this exercise because they will also be adding those situations whereby the depreciation assets were sold, non depreciable assets were sold, the inventory. So it will be just a refresher of learning number seven in combination with learning number eight. The same will apply in learning number nine. It will be the mix of learning number seven, learning number eight, and learning number nine, so that you can see how do they integrate these uh, three learning units. Because your exam will be based on the integration of these three learning units. Any question up to so far? Memory? Memory? Oh, sorry to take you back. Uh, on page 177, um, I can see that they deducted 9.6. I just want to understand that on profit 
if profit before tax. Okay. On page 170, the profit before tax. Yes, on page 177. Okay. Uh, if you check the subsidiary delay the dividend, right? So remember, when you delay the dividend, the dividend will be received by who? By the parent. Okay. And when the parent receives the dividend, he's going to record them as an income. Mm -hmm. And when he records as an income, this dividend, they need to be deducted because they are not part of the group. Oh, okay. So we take them because they are not part of the group. Like, let's go back to... <clears throat> You see on the analysis of shareholders, you have done that 9.6 on page 175. Yes. So that 175, that 9.6, it's gonna be added. It's gonna added as an income in the books of a subs of the parent. So he will have income received from subsidiary. Then okay. after having the income received from subsidiary, he also have to deduct it again. Was we did that based on the elimination of intergroup I common item based on the information on adjustment number uh, performer journal. If you can see the 9.6 and the 2.4 and the 12,000, that yes. 9.6 was dividend received by who? A limited. So since he received them on your performer journal, you need to deduct them when you are doing the consolidated. Okay, now I get it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mary, any question from you? Okay, Stephen, uh, Mike is not working. He said he doesn't have any question. Tandega? No question from me. Thank you. And TK, Takalani? I've been trying to understand um, the different on maybe on the exa the last example was example five, ne? Yes. Maybe on the example five and compared to example three or two, the 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 different will only be on the journals because of when we go to the consolidation statement. Um, if there was that um nine point six for 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 A limited, like we're gonna anyway eliminate them. So they were not gonna go to to consolidation uh, statement. Yes. Yeah. So the different on these examples it will only be on the journals. Yeah, most most if you can check like mostly uh, I will say example three example Example three and example four. Uh, example four, let's see, 9.6, 2.4, 9.6. Yeah, example three and example five. The only difference is on the consultations because the example three, I mean, the example four took more pattern of the example three. So okay. most, the difference is only, only on the performer journals. All right. Yeah. Because uh, that's like most of the marks, they will be also sitting on the performer journals. Because in normally when they do the consolidations, you are required to be A, draft the performer journals of whoever, then B, draft the statement of profit and loss, C, draft the change in equity, then D, do the thing, do the, the balance sheet. So the more marks will be more on your performer journal. So if you can able to know how to eliminate things, then you'll be sorted. Okay. Yeah. We see where. We see where. I don't know if you have a problem also with your mic. So if you have a problem with the mic, I would prefer just you just type that you don't have any question or if you have a question, then you mention it. 
so that we are on the same page. But in this regard, I will say no one have a question. Uh, we're going to tackle example, not example, I mean a question on learning number eight. Uh, the question one, well, both of them, they want the statement of profit and loss. Um, I will do question one next week. I will do question one, and then we can also start with part of the preference shares. Then we'll see where times will last next week. But the preference shares part is a little bit longer. So I think it will be part of it half next week, and then we will complete it on the week of the 18th. Yeah. Okay, for those which are, the classes will be like this. Today, the class today is gone. We are gonna have a class on the 11th. We're gonna have a class again on the 18th. On the 25th, there won't be a class from my side. I won't be available on that date. So it will be 11, 18, and then the second. So please note that. Yeah, that's it from me from today. And then we'll meet again next week. But I believe we are going well with your studies because I don't see any questions via email, any questions via WhatsApp. So I assume that everything's going fine. That's it from me. Uh, that last is agent. Thank you, Mr. Malab. Thank you, Tandeka. Thank you. Greg, you can.